Think of the MG ZS and you're likely to think of the performance saloon built in the early noughties which was available with a V6 engine. Well good news, there's a new version available, but I don't think it's the model you will be expecting. That's because the new MG ZS is now a practical, cheap family SUV. But is it worth your money? Well, I've been driving it for the last week to find out. The MG ZS is quite a handsome looking car, but in truth, that's because the looks aren't very original. Recognize this front end? It looks very Mazda CX-5 to me. And at the back, the design is very similar to let me think, let me think. Oh, a Kia Sportage. Hmm. The car tested here is the mid-range model, meaning that as standard, you get 17 inch alloys, which look okay, but I must admit, they do look rather lost in these wheel arches. Hello. Hello. Step inside and you'll find an interior, which is nicer than you were probably expecting for a car of this price. There are of course some hard plastics, but the car's cheap, so this comes as no surprise. What may surprise you though is the soft touch dashboard which is a welcome feature as is the sporty steering wheel and the fabric seats finished with a dog tooth design. Mind you though, I'm not a massive fan of this faux carbon fibre effect. Nope, not for me. The MG ZS is available in three trim levels, Explore, Excite and Exclusive. Explore starts from £12,495 and is able to offer features such as LED daytime running lights, automatic headlights, Bluetooth, cruise control, electric windows, auxiliary port and USB port. Pay £13,995 and you will get the Excite model for model tested here. It's able to boast 17 inch alloys, front fog lamps, 8 inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and DAB radio, rear parking sensors and air conditioning. But if you'd rather have the rain topping model exclusive, you'll have to pay £15,495. That model is able to boast navigation, leather style seats and a rear parking camera. But autonomous emergency braking is not available on any models, nor is it available as an option, which I do find rather disappointing. And because of the ZS's lack of safety features, it was only able to get three stars from Euro NCAP. So if family safety is a priority for you, you may want to look elsewhere, but this car is able to offer six airbags. The front of a ZS offers a decent amount of space, shoulder room and elbow room is acceptable, but I would like a better driving position. Now the steering wheel only adjusts for rake and not reach, so for me, getting comfortable is a little bit tricky. The seat has got a good level of adjustment though, and the seats themselves are rather comfortable, although I don't think they'd have quite enough support for longer journeys. Now what about cubby holes? Well, I've been able to fit a one litre bottle of water in the door bin, which is handy, and I've got a bit of space left over. I've got a cubby hole down here where I like to put my smartphone, two cup holders in the middle, another cubby hole here, and of course you've got a glove box which has a decent amount of space in there. So the front isn't too bad, but what about the back? So I'll be honest, I thought the back of a ZS was going to be quite tight for someone of my height. Oh, I'm a poet and I don't know it. Well, I do know it. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that even though the driver's seat has been altered for my six foot two frame, I've got plenty of leg room. And if I'm honest, I really wasn't expecting that. Plus, I can get my feet underneath the seat in front of me and stretch right out. Very nice indeed. And the headroom is also ample as well. So I can see no reason why you can't get three adults in the back with little complaint. There's also Isofix points in here as well. Of course there is, it's a family SUV. So if you're more concerned about carrying young children in the back as opposed to adults, again, should be absolutely fine. But what about the boot? The ZS also offers a big boot. Open up the tailgate and you'll be greeted by 448 litres worth of space, making it one of the biggest in class. But if you do need even more space, you can of course fold down the 6040 rear seats to give you 1,375 litres. The only downside is there is quite a thick lip getting into the boot. So if you've got heavy bags of shopping, it is a bit of a pain. 
but on the plus side you can raise the floor of the boot it is adjustable so you can fix that issue like so there we are much easier So the ZS is available with a choice of just two engines, none of which are diesel. So if you're looking for a diesel or indeed four wheel drive, you will need to look elsewhere. But yes, like I say, two engines on offer and they are a 1.5 litre naturally aspirated petrol engine or a one litre turbocharged petrol engine, which has three cylinders, whereas the 1.5 has got four cylinders. The engine I've got is for 1.5 litre petrol which has 105 brake horsepower with 141 newton meters of torque. It's mated to a five speed manual gearbox, which is the only gearbox you can have with this engine, which on the whole isn't that great. The changes are quite rubbery and notchy and no, it's not a great gearbox, but you do get used to the changes once you've driven it a while. But yeah, like I say, no, not for me. And if you go for the one liter turbo, that can only be had with a six speed auto. Now in regards to performance, this engine will hit 62 miles per hour in 10.9 seconds and continue to a top speed of 109 miles per hour. But what if you go for the one liter turbo? Well, interestingly, although that is a smaller engine and it's more powerful because of that turbocharger, it will actually hit 62 miles per hour 1.5 seconds slower than this engine so it's 12.4 seconds however it does have a higher top speed that hits 112 miles per hour and of course this car hits 109 so it's not the biggest difference but a difference is a difference now how does this engine perform well it's na so of course you will need to really wring its neck out to get any kind of power out of it between 1000 and 2000 revs pretty much nothing happens at all your foot is hard to the carpet and nope no drama whatsoever nothing happening underneath that bonnet however once you get it to about 3000 revs that's when the power starts coming in and then you get to a rather noisy 6000 revs and it's time to change up Now this engine may not be the most powerful, but when you're cruising, it is pretty quiet and civilized. So it's not too bad. Now this car isn't the most competent cruiser, purely because the ride is quite unsettled. Now MG has stated that the chassis and the suspension and the whole setup was tuned for UK roads. And in all honesty, I'd like to see the roads they were using because the ride is unsettled pretty much all of the time and you would need to find a perfectly smooth road for this car to feel more relaxed and let's face it in the UK that's pretty difficult the ride may be busy but for the most part it is comfortable so that's something I suppose so the ride may not be the best but what is the ZS like when you show it to some corners now if you're looking for an SUV that is going to reward you in the bench yeah, this probably won't be the car for you and it's a shame because you look at MG's heritage and it's a brand that is well known for making small fun handling cars and I know this car is a completely different entity to previous MG cars but you'd hope that the heritage would somehow rub off on this car but I'm afraid it hasn't the handling leaves a fair bit to be desired there's a fair amount of body roll, the steering has got very little feedback. Okay, the weighting is quite nice, and if I'm honest, it is reasonably direct, but do you get much reward from this car? No, not really. The grip is okay, but you won't have to push the car too hard before the traction control wants to get involved and join the party. Another aspect of the driving I don't particularly like are the brakes. Now the brake pedal has got a weird weighting to it. When you first prod it, you're met by this rather odd resistance and you can't really feel any braking happening. 
it's not until you give the brake pedal a bit more of a prod that the car begins to slow down. So the brakes don't exactly inspire confidence, that's for certain. That face, that pretty much sums up what I think of the car's handling. No, it's not for me. Mind you, it's not all bad. One thing I do like about this car is that you've got three different steering modes, so you can change the weight of the steering. So you can either have urban, which is light of course, normal for normal driving, or dynamic for when the going gets twisty. But I have to say, even in normal mode, the steering weight is quite satisfactory. And in dynamic mode, it's got a nice weight to it, but in my eyes anyway, or in my hands I should say, it doesn't feel artificially heavy. I drove a DS7 Crossback one or two weeks back, and I must say, when the steering got heavy in that, it felt too artificial, but in the MG, it feels pretty spot on if you ask me. Now let's have a little chat about refinement. As you would expect from a cheap car, it hasn't got the highest levels. Even though this car is on 17 inch alloys, you know, they're not the biggest alloys in the world, there's a fair amount of tire noise coming into the cabin, so if I shut up for a few moments and change up. That is quite loud and the wind noise isn't particularly great either. I think it's safe to say that MG ZS isn't the greatest car to drive in the world, but what's fuel economy like? Now because there's no option for diesels in the ZS, this car isn't the most frugal in its class, but even so, it's far from thirsty. So this 1.5 litre petrol engine has a combined MPG figure of 49.6 miles to the gallon. And in my experience, I've been getting around 44, 45, which is pretty impressive indeed. Now you'd think that the one litre turbo would be better still because it's a smaller engine, it's three cylinders, and it's got the help of a turbocharger. But no, in fact, that engine is able to offer 44.9 on a combined run, so it's not quite as good. But what about CO2? Well, this engine emits 129 grams per kilometer of CO2, meaning for the first year of VED, you'll pay 165 pounds. Now, if you go for the one litre turbo, you'll find it emits 144 grams per kilometer, so it's not as green meaning for the first year of VED, you would pay £205. So I think it's safe to say that MG ZS is far from the greatest SUV to drive, but let's not forget about its price tag. It's one of the cheapest brand new SUVs money can buy, and despite this, you still get a good level of practicality, space, and equipment. Plus you get a seven year warranty. So the ZS, it's cheap and cheerful. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to click that bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe for more car obsession.